Let's bring in Stacey King, former Bulls player, now Bulls broadcaster. What were you expecting last night in this game, Stace? Uh, physical, physical play. Um, we felt, you know, for the Bulls to have a chance to win, um, especially being shorthanded, um, you know, they are they are one of the most physical defensive teams in the NBA. But, you know, sometimes this, during the season they've had lapses where they've had bad quarters and not been able to finish games off. But last night you saw a determination, a focus, a playoff atmosphere last night. LeBron have a legitimate beef in his comments after the game and the physical style of play. Uh, no. I mean, this is the NBA. Dan, you remember the 90s and, and, and how physical the league was. Uh, you know, those those plays last night, that's basketball. You know, he's, he's a phenomenal athlete. He's the best player right now on the planet. Uh, he's playing at a different level. Uh, he's 270 pounds. I mean, you know, Kirk Heinrich weighs about 125. I think he'd be a flyweight. Uh, in the UFC, and uh, <laughs> and he's the one that's far foul in the bar. So, I mean, we're the argument. But if we're going to compare, I know it's not the 90s, but if we were comparing the physical play of last night to what it was like in the 90s with the bad boy Pistons, how they treated Jordan, how uh, how similar uh, would they be? I, I, I wouldn't even say it's on the same level. Um, and the simple fact is, is that, you know, you back in those days, I mean, guys would go to the basket against the Pistons or the Knicks, and you would get taken out of the air. I mean, you would get literally thrown into the second row. Uh, and, and, I mean, that's just how they played. Um, last night was physical. And I, and I think, you know, LeBron is not used to having, you know, having that type of play on him. I mean, you know, I think when you see him coming at you full speed and you've seen it on videos, you've watched him play, you know, when he comes at you like a freight train, guys just get out of the way. You know, yeah. they don't want to stand there and take the, you know, take the hit. But last night, the Bulls, you know, they're a tough team. They're a tough-minded team. They took the hit. And, and the one thing they did last night, Dan, was take away the big plays, the alley-oops, the, the plays that are deflating. They did not allow them to get out in transition. And that really, that really kind of slowed Miami down a little bit. They were they were uh, determined not to give up layups, and you saw that when Heinrich grabbed LeBron. I don't think it was a flagrant, I'm going to bring you down like uh, Kurt Rambis was brought to the ground by Kevin McHale. This was a, hey, I'm going to bring you down, and I think LeBron brought that up post-game that he was sort of tackled by Kirk Heinrich in that move. Well, I mean, like I said, Kirk weighs about, <laughs> probably about 170 pounds soaking wet, and when you see a 270-pound, you know, freight train coming at you. I mean, there's not a lot he can do but try to grab him and not allow him to get up because, you know, it's one thing to foul LeBron, but he's so strong that he's able to go through guys and still get in ones. And if you saw that play, Kirk was one-on-one back there retreating, backpedaling, and he knew the only way he could stop is to try to wrap up, you know, LeBron. And unfortunately, you know, his momentum took him back and they both fell down. But, you know, last night, I mean, the Bulls set the tone early. They came out. Uh, and they, they bang guys, you know, and, and this has been really a physical, you know, the last couple of years with this team, this has been, you know, real physical game. You go back a couple of seasons ago in the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, it was a physical series. And, and I think Miami coming in last night, you know, Bulls being shorthanded, maybe they overlooked them. I know that we're going to say, was this the blueprint for beating the Heat? And I always say, you have to have the players to put that blueprint in play. I think Indiana has a better uh, opportunity to knock out the Heat than the Chicago Bulls do, but... If you're seeing this interior play, even with the Knicks, if you got Kenyon Martin, you got Tyson Chandler, now you got some big guys in there to be physical and you can give up some fouls. But what team, what style has the best chance of knocking the Heat out of the playoffs? A team with a big front line, um, a team that can offensive rebound, um, that can pound them on the inside. Uh, I don't remember what the numbers were last night, but Bulls out rebounded uh, the Heat um, last night. They out rebounded them pretty much, um, you know, two of the three games this year. So if you've got a big front line, guys that can get in there, that can also score, not just offense rebound, but guys that can score in the post because they really don't have a, a shutdown post defender. I mean, Chris Anderson has been a big plus for them. Uh, he's given them a lot of things that they didn't have, some toughness, block shots, but they really don't have the size. And when you've got to play LeBron James at the power forward spot, uh, to try to take advantage because he's a, probably your best. He's your best player, but he's your best rebounder, your best defender. So, but unfortunately, in the playoff series, you know, if a team like Indiana and we get healthy, we get a Joe Keen Noah back, and we we present problems to them because of the size and the the physicality of these teams. He's Stacy King, the Bulls announcer, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. If I had a thought bubble over Derrick Rose at the end of this game, what do you think that that thought bubble would say? Ooh. I, I, you know what? It would probably say, 
I want to hurry up and get back because <laughs> this is this looks like fun. And, but is there uh, more pressure though, Stace? If you look at this team, they just beat the Heat. You get Joe Kim Noah back. You know, I I don't want Derrick Rose to come back unless he knows mentally he can come back. Physically is one thing, mentally is another thing. But if you're looking at that and you're thinking, gosh, what if? Does it put more pressure on him? I think he puts pressure on himself. And and you know, the one thing you know, we hear this you know we hear this question all the time here in Chicago. Um, I wish I had a dollar for every time I, I heard this question. Um, but you know, the one thing about Derek is he's never been injured before. This is totally different. This is not a hamstring injury. This is not an ankle injury. This is a reconstructive knee. And this is a, this is a kid who relies so much on explosion, athleticism. And at the end of the day, you know, if you, when you look at this kid, you don't want Derek Rose long term. You, you know, you don't want Derek Rose just for this remaining of the season and then take the chance something happens to him. He's got to feel comfortable in his own mind if he's ready to come back. Everybody has a timetable. You know, people saw Rubio come back after nine months. People saw Shumpert come back. But if you look at those guys, they, they're not 100% back either. They yeah. look like the shell of themselves. We played Rubio the other night, and he's looked better every game, but he's still not the Ricky Rubio of last season. And they've gotten 40 games in. He's got 40 games in. So, you know, Derrick Rose's situation is a little bit different. Um, you know, he doesn't feel comfortable yet. But I've seen him work out. And, and when he came out and made that statement, I'm 85%, um, you know, a couple of months ago, you know, he's, I guarantee you now if you ask him that same question, he'll tell you he's, he's a lot more further along than 85%. When's he coming back? You know what? That's I, I, I thought it would be this week, you know, because, like I said, the more I see him, the more explosion I see you know, him doing and, and the more confidence he gets. You know, but, you know, it, it's up to him. I mean, you know, you're almost in a similar situation with Blake Griffin when he when he hurt his knee. And the Clippers just shut him down for the rest of the year and then brought him back the next season. As the season goes along, Dan, you only got a few games left. And you know, you know, he's going to be on a, a minute-to-minute basis. He's not going to come back and play 40 minutes. He's going to be 25 minutes. And the longer he sits out, the harder it is for him to come back. I don't care what kind of athlete that he is. Uh, you need games. You need game experience. You need confidence to get that knee right. And, you know, the longer he sits out, you know, it's going to be tough to come back this season. Before I let you go, you played with Michael, won championships with Michael. Can you ever see a day when you'll view LeBron as better than Michael Jordan? No. <laughs> I mean, he's got to win six championships. I mean, the things that MJ accomplished – uh, you know, there. You know, that was the talk. You know, he heard the the mothership uh, talk about. You know, do the duo of LeBron and 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 Dwayne Wade and Scotty and Michael. You know, those guys, what they did there in this streak is remarkable, and you got to give them credit. I mean, that's twenty twenty seven games. Uh, that's a remarkable feat. But at the end of the day, you can't compare them to that seventy two and ten team because one, they lost fourteen games before. So until they, you know, win some championships, until they, as a duo, not as individually, but as a duo. Um, they're not in that conversation. MJ's still the greatest player of all time. And, you know, Kobe, you know, Kobe's the one who's getting slighted. Kobe's probably yep. about the closest thing to him right now. And everybody forgets about that. He doesn't get his credit that he deserves because you know, look at the championships. He's won. Look what he's accomplished in but, his career. But, Stace, you, you bring up a great point. If we don't have Michael Jordan on the landscape, Michael Jordan has never existed. Okay. Do we look at Kobe Bryant and recognize him as the greatest player of all time? I think you have to, especially if he gets uh, – well, he's got five. So let's say Jordan is not there. You, you have to look at Kobe Bryant and, and, and say the things that he's accomplished, he, he would have to be right up there uh, as the greatest player. So, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> MJ, MJ is the man on the mountaintop, baby. Everybody's trying to skip that dance, and not too many people are close yet, baby. Oh, keep those three championship rings shined up, Stace. <laughs> hey, good to visit with you again, Stace. Thanks. Thanks a lot, bud. All right, Stacey King. Bulls broadcaster for uh, Comcast Sports and WGN.